Well, g'day there, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining me as at the market close on Thursday. This is not going to be a market recap. I've already done that as at the close on Thursday and walk through a bunch of trades or at least stocks in the top left hand side of my screen. That, of course, being our top 12 list. This is actually going to be a continuational video from another uh, sort of update I left you with two days ago. What I asked for were some stock recommendations to take a look at so we can perform some analysis and try and come to you know, potentially some trades moving forward. Now of that list of recommendations, really what I've done, I've just made a short list before me. I've narrowed it down to nine stocks and really that was the majority of recommendations. You can see on my screen right now, I've got applied materials on my screen. This is one of the recommended stocks to look at. You can see for yourself here, this is really just off the cusp. I haven't got any lines drawn on this and that is really uh, for the majority of stocks. Now I am going to go through nine of those stocks very quickly, just so I can give you an overview of what I'll be speaking about. We've got Nvidia, we have Microsoft, Facebook, we have Union Pacific Corporation, Applied Materials, which is on my screen right now. We have Alibaba, DHR, Adobe, and Xerox. So the majority of those companies, I would say are technology. It's quite interesting because as I said a little earlier, the NASDAQ itself looks to have potentially set off that of a short-term exhaustion gap considering that we saw that of an engulfing candlestick today as at the close on Thursday. Uh, but this is going to be, I think, worthwhile for the majority of people listening along. I do recommend that you make yourself potentially a tea or coffee. I'm not sure how long I am going to speak for. I think of these nine companies, seven of which have got absolutely no lines on them, nor have I really looked at them all that much in the past. Two, however, we have looked at historically. Those two stocks are Facebook and also Alibaba. So we've sort of rotated them both into our top 12 list, or at least we've spoken about them. Um, very recently, we do rotate them in and out depending on what those stocks are doing. And as such, they do have support and resistance and even potentially trend lines drawn on those charts. But what I'm going to do for you right now is begin. And we're going to begin with uh, ticker symbol AMAT, which is Applied Materials. Now, this is the weekly chart, first of all, on AMAT. What I personally like to do, you can write this down, is do the support and resistance, at least where we are relative to current price, and also understand the trend of the underlying stock or even the ETF or market, whatever it is you're choosing to trade. So if we very quickly go through this process, I'm going to change this to a default line, right, or actually just a closing price line. I'm going to click my trend line uh, tool here and I'm just going to try and find potentially that of any trends in effect. Now, as you can see, it is very clearly to the upside. It may look better if I bring it back into the daily time frame and zoom on out a little bit. You can see that I'm really just connecting these little lows here. So you can see on my screen, one, two, three, four. Uh, we didn't touch here, that's all right. We've got fifth touch here and it appears as though at the moment we've actually broken this bullish trend line. So generally what happens is when we break the primary trend line, we can move into that of a sideways market move. And what will essentially happen if the support area holds is that we will come on back down to this period over here. This looks to be at the beginning of 2016 and we'll just simply draw another trend line at a later date that's going to be at a decelerating angle to currently what I have on my screen, which is the blue trend line. But that is a very nice looking trend line, although current price action is actually below it. And it looks as though most recently, if I can zoom in on the detail without getting too far ahead of myself in the analysis, it looks as though that we've actually broken it, retested it, overshot it, and now we're pricing in a series of shorter term lower highs, which is very interesting. So now that we have this trend line, and what I can really do is simply just adjust it, make it a little bit tighter. I know it overshoots it here, but when I go back in history, you can see that this is very clearly or very close to that of that trend direction. Now, when we look at this now, this is still the daily time frame of AMAT. I'm just trying to bring it into a nicer perspective. Again, I go into the closing line price and really what I want to do now is draw on essentially the horizontal lines of support and resistance. When it comes to trading financial markets, when it comes to trading individual companies, whatever the chosen sort of asset vehicle you choose to trade, I can say from personal experience that in my personal um, wisdom, I would say that support and resistance, or right, or in my personal experience, I would say that support and resistance is up there with the most important tools that we have as technical analysts. And the reason for that is because it really just graphs the structure of price action. And really what I'm trying to do is find pivots on the chart. Obviously the YouTube channel is called Pivot Point Trading. 
And really that's exactly what we're trying to identify right now. Pivot points are largely interchangeable with support and resistance. So whenever you hear me say pivot point or whenever you hear someone say pivot point, really they're just talking about support and resistance points, which is otherwise known as turning points on the chart. What we want to identify and really understand is, well, where do we see the majority of market participants have to make a decision as to where the next direction of price action is going to go? And what I'm trying to do on my screen as talking to you is simply just highlight a bunch of these horizontal areas of support and resistance. Consider them, um, you know, the floorboards and the ceilings in your home, consider it whatever you want to, uh, but it just works again as additional demand and additional supply that generally comes into whatever it is you're trading at a certain predefined location. And as you can see on my chart right now on Amat, okay, or applied materials, you can see that for one, we are very close to or at right now a current support area at $48.99. You can see that we may actually be bouncing off this. Now, notwithstanding the market analysis, that isn't enough to actually start or at least begin jumping into positions on AMAT. It's not enough. We need some more additional confirmation. So what we do, and again, let me just draw a couple more horizontal, at least uh, temporary sort of support areas over here. I can sort of bring it down. And what I'll do for you very quickly is I'll change the candlestick uh, setting because generally what will happen is the previous chart was the closing price. But when we incorporate that of the candlesticks here, you'll see that we do have the upper and lower wick. So it may look as though, especially in this vicinity just here, that these lower wicks are generally going to tag support and they may also overshoot resistance. It is just additional confirmation of where that true pivot or at least that turning point is. Now, as you can see, I can also adjust these a little bit lower or or a little bit higher, depending on how many touches and where those touches are taking place. But I think we have sort of zeroed in very nicely on the overall structure of this particular stock. Now, what is also appearing to me? Okay, so first of all, we've got our trend line in effect. Okay, and really there is a secondary trend line, by the way. And what I'll need to do is I need to change to my trend line, change this back to a line chart. And really the low begins over here. So you can see this really, really decelerated sort of trend line, a very long-term sort of legitimate, sustainable trend in this particular stock. It doesn't help us whatsoever in our analysis right now. You can see the projection is over here at 25 bucks, but we're all the way up here at more or less $50 per share. But as I start narrowing in on the data, I wanna go back into the candlestick and I wanna just pay attention to any potential shorter uh, types of uh, trend lines that may be working for us or even against us. And really what becomes apparent is that it looks as though we are in some form of a sideways moving channel. You can very easily see the oscillations between support and resistance. And I'm just trying to draw the ebbs and flows of this. And you can also see that once we broke above this handle at 47.90, we've tagged it once, twice, which was essentially the retest of that bullish trend line where we went parabolic. But since then, we've tagged it on three more occasions. I'm counting right here that we have tagged $48 per share on seven occasions. So we can definitively say that this is a very important support area. Now I'm just going to leave this as a red line. Also on top of that, I'm making the distinguishment that we have a high, a lower high, another lower high, another lower high, and a subsequent lower high again. So although I've already said it looks like a sideways channel, sideways channel can be useful if we are at support because generally, you will trade off from support and you will sell at resistance and vice versa. You can either short at resistance and buy to cover at support, or you can simply just buy call options at support and buy put options at resistance. That's really the plays that we're looking at. Personally, I am an option buyer. I don't like to write options, or at least I'm not a not an option seller. I have done it in the past. I don't really like it. I prefer just to trade directional movements in the underlying share price. That is something for you to decide what you like to do and what suits you. Uh, but I'm just describing the markets through my own personal perspective. What I can also do is just simply draw this little trend line here. It doesn't really help us all that much, but at least it gives us uh, sort of a resistance area to be wary of. I'm going to stop the extension into the future because I don't like it. And I like to keep these charts as clear and as straightforward and as simple as possible. So what we're really doing right now is just looking at the confines of the chart. We're looking really at the perimeters of price action. We're looking at the structure of price action. But again, this is not enough, or at least I was going to ask the question, is this enough? We've gone through support and resistance. 
We've gone through the trend lines. We're trying to identify potentially now some chart patterns too. And what I'm going to draw for you right now is potentially that of a descending triangle. Descending triangles have lower highs, but they have a relative support area. And that's what we have on the screen right now. And also, just as a guess and assumption, if I bring up the Bollinger Bands, I'm going to assume that we may be moving into a Bollinger Band squeeze. And it's not really defined at the moment. It sort of breaks away from that. But if we continue to move sideways around 47 to 49, what you will expect is that top band to come down and this lower band to stabilize as well at $48 per share. So it's not the nicest of signals at the moment. Let's go through some additional confirmations. We've got uh, the 100 and the 200 holding above price action. Again, not helping us all that much. It looks as though we are going to get a definitive cross or at least the 100 back below the 200, which a lot of people look at. And they say, well, this is a long-term sell signal. Maybe, maybe not. I'm still under, um, under sort of confidence that the support area should hold at the moment. We've got the exponential moving averages that are not helping us. Why? Because we are moving sideways. When you see stocks, markets, um, ETFs, currency, whatever it is, commodities moving sideways, you do not want to pay attention to the exponential moving averages. Instead, you should be looking at the oscillators because this is what is going to help us when it comes to short-term overbought and oversold levels. So as you can see on this, you can see that the Stokes is down at about 20. It is pushing into oversold territory and it's trying to cross up. We've got the RSI doing the same thing and we have the MACD, which is also in negative territory. So we can say that, look, we may be towards the end of the bearish swing. And if this support area holds and we continue to see bullish candlesticks develop around this 48 handle, well, then we can begin contemplating bringing down a bullish trade or at least a bullish trigger a contingency order to enter into a position if we break above that respective resistance area. And that's the resistance area that I've drawn on my screen. So I'm sort of just bringing a puzzle together and understanding really what to look for, where we're going to see shifts in sentiment. And then playing that shift in sentiment when the market is closed by setting these trades up outside of market hours. So what I can do right now is I can say, well, really 50-50, we've got a trade from 52.85 and this could take us as high as about $60, $61, which is the swing high back to March 2018. However, we always want to remain as neutral as possible when it comes to analysis. And really what I'm, what I'm suggesting right now is that there's no guarantees that this support area is actually going to hold. I mean, it would be foolish to say that this support area is definitively going to hold. No one really knows. And the markets are looking a little bit shaky at the moment, or at least what has happened over the past four trading sessions of this week. But what we can say to ourselves is, well, I don't want to short below this area because the next support area is down here at 45. We'll assume that will be even more oversold at this point. And in the past, when we've come down here on two occasions, we've bounced and we've bounced quite aggressively. So what we can do is we can say, well, if this stock breaks 44.69, we can put it in our trading account to say, look, buy puts if uh, the share price of ticker symbol AMAT moves below 44.69, it'll get us into a trade, a bearish trade. And our target on this is going to be if I can duplicate this trigger, hopefully it doesn't override or at least work over a support area, which it doesn't, I can change the configuration of the color. We'll have a trade set up down to 42.10. So essentially what we've done right now when it comes to this particular stock, we're allowing it a little bit of wiggle room. We're allowing it to potentially move into the apex of this triangle. And again, this is going to come into those Bollinger Bands pinching and squeezing, which may allow us to bring both the bearish trigger higher and the bullish trigger lower. What I would not encourage, all right, anyone to do would be to place this bullish trigger uh, any lower than what it is because of this declining resistance area. And I will say from the outset of this recording that this analysis that I'm running through with you is purely for educational purposes. I'm, you know, go ahead and place it in virtual accounts. Um, do as you please, but this is not definitive trade entries and exits and targets and management and money management and risk management. That's all additional content. This is more so just the application of analysis in the real world at the current juncture to a list of current stocks uh, that have been put forth and recommended by you. I'm simply going through the structures and the process, the mechanics really of what we do when we're looking for actual viable candidates. Now, what we can say also is that when it comes to AMAT or AMAT, are we ready for a trade right now? And the answer to that question, or at least for myself is, well, I'm not prepared. I'm really not prepared to go long and I'm not prepared to go short, I can say that this can be added to a watch list. And what I'll do is I'll check it from time to time. 
I'll check it to see whether or not it gets down into a point of interest, the point of interest being this potential green rectangular box as a buy opportunity, okay? And the rotation back up to resistance, or it's going to be a break of the downward sloping resistance line and the same sort of mechanics of the trade. If we were back up at $60 per share, well, then we'd be looking at this as potentially a channel con uh, continuation. And we'd be looking at potentially that of a rollover from resistance down to support. But this is where we find ourselves. And as long as this support area holds, more so uh, just below $46 per share, there's a good chance that if the market stabilize and move higher, that AMAT is going to do exactly the same thing. So that's the first stock that uh, really was on my list. What I can do also is more or less just jump into the next stock, which will just, I've got a, a short list in front of me. I've, I've, I've wrote down a bunch of ticker symbols on a blank piece of paper here. And as you can see, again, let's start the process all over. Let's go to the weekly chart. Let's try and find some trends in effect. And I'm going to change this to the solid closing line. Now, what I wanna pay attention to is the low in 2009. And this is going to be the beginning of trends, trends in effect. And really what I'm looking for uh, a number of touches. And as you can see, by the way, if I just very quickly do this, if I align the 2009 low and this very pronounced low in the year 2011 and then do an extension into the future, here we are uh, in the year 2016, you can see just how close. I mean, we overshot it, but you can see that this was essentially that pivot, that turning point, very close to that bullish sort of trend. Now, obviously what I can do, but there is real no reason for this at the moment, is that I can draw sort of tighter, uh, trend lines, but this isn't going to help us right now. I mean, this is say, for instance, in the year 2011, and we started pricing in a series of low of high lows in the year 2012. Well, then I would have drawn this line. The problem is I wasn't trading UNP in the year 2014 or 2015, but you can see very clearly that when we broke the trend line, that's what essentially drove us back into that first trend line that I've just drawn on my screen or very close to it. So I'm going to zoom back out again. This is the weekly chart and Let's just see, I'm trying to visually identify anything. What I could potentially do is draw another trend line off from the low here and then just simply extend it into the future because what you're going to realize is that this line is going to be a rising support. It's a trend, it's a trend in effect. It's working in conjunction with the primary trend and this is more so that of the intermediate trend in conjunction with that larger primary trend. But also on top of that, what we can look at is this extension here, which is getting, uh, you know, relatively close to current price action. Let me just play around with this and go into the daily time frame. I love these types of activities because again, it's all just straight off the cuff. It's just honest analysis. And it's quite interesting to see how we've come on up and we've run on up into this critical area a couple of times. It's not really helping us now. I thought maybe it would look a little bit nicer, but it almost aligned quite decently. So once we go through that process again, what I wanna pay attention to, is current support and resistance. So I'm going to click my horizontal line. And I mean, you can start wherever you want, really. What I'm obviously noticing is this resistance over here. It might be a little bit messy on my chart, but you can see here, this is coming in about 114. It also was a resistance point here and a resistance turned support before we went parabolic back up into the structure of that first trend line, which broke, which takes us back into the primary bullish trend. Okay, now if I zoom on into the current detail, because really all of this analysis down here is irrelevant because we're priced up at 143. So if you want to go through and place a bunch of lines on your chart, I mean, you're more than welcome to, but it's not really adding much value. Really, you can see the turning points, the pivot points, see, all over the place. It works as a roadmap and it's very powerful because it just directs you or at least it navigates you around the financial markets. You just wait, you're patient, you understand where that pivot is. And then the, the theory is, is that you try and remain as sort of bi-directional, as neutral as possible. And then you just trade the momentum either bouncing off from a support area or the breaking down off from a support area too and vice versa. So that's as complicated as you need to make trading. It really doesn't get much more complicated than that. There are obviously more techniques that, um, that help us and obviously which I haven't spoken about so far, but I'm just going through the contemporary sort of application and really what I'm seeing on the chart I mean, you can see here how it gets a little bit messy. It's not the nicest of sort of clean support and resistance areas, but let's just run with this for the time being. I then am going to change into the candlesticks just to sort of confirm some suspicions. And you can see a bunch of lower wicks over here. You can also see a bunch of higher wicks over here, uh, resistance points here. And very clearly, 
UNP is still in a bullish trend, okay? We've broken above resistance. It looks like some form of a stair step pattern. And if you wanna separate this into a support area, a resistance, and then a neutral point, you can see that we're back towards the current resistance areas. Now, I like these types of trades. They're pretty decent, especially when the market is pulled back from its historic highs, like we've just seen uh, really for the majority of this week so far. So what I can very easily do is very simply just put in a bullish trade above the highs here coming in. I like to give a little bit of wiggle between the resistance candles, okay? And obviously where my entry is going to be, I really wanna mitigate that of potential sort of false breakouts. And this is one of the best ways of doing it. And you can see it's coming in at 150.16. Now, obviously, if I roll through the analysis, we're going to be above the long-term simple moving averages, a very different direction, okay, to the car or to the previous stock. Notice that price action is above, which is a bullish signal, and we've got a bullish alignment of the simple moving averages. We are trending with the exponential moving averages as well. So the question becomes, well, are we in some form of a channel? And the channel would be support down here at 128 and resistance at 146. Or are we in the beginning of a trend? And really, I don't have the answer to that question, but there's a couple of rules that I want to share with you. Number one, always trade in the direction of the trend. All right, Tr try not to find yourself trading against the direction of the trend. So when it comes to these types of trading decisions, what I like to do is I'll identify positions where I would, first of all, want to pay attention to, okay, as potential buying locations and that is generally it. I'm not looking to short. I'm not trying to say, well, where is the short, uh, the, the short term temporary sort of support area? Am I looking to short, say, for instance, below 140? No, it's not the reason for that. It's because really what's going to be happening is you're going to be shorting or very close to into rising exponential moving averages. And that doesn't really work out well for anyone uh, during a trend. It's very dangerous. And once that trend continues, you'll be holding in the wrong direction. So the reason I'm drawing this green rectangular box on my screen is because obviously in the past, it's been resistance on a number of occasions, really for the majority of 2018. We're now above it. And there's a good chance that we come on back down and we retest this old resistance as new support. They handle it about 137. So straight away, UNP is in a long-term bullish trend. It's in an intermediate bullish uptrend. Yes, there is the potential that we're in a channel that we're sort of up at resistance at. And really, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt, number one, to the buyers to prove themselves that they're going to drive the price above 150, which would be the continuation of the trend, or I want to allow it to pull on back down, to recalibrate, to reprice, to shake out, of course, a lot of the sellers, the short-term sellers, and just to see whether or not demand starts to come into UNP in this general vicinity. What we'll do is we'll come back, we'll look at the candlesticks, and then we'll reevaluate the trade setup at lower levels. And really what that gives us the opportunity to do is to bring down this 150 bullish entry down to a lower level, potentially as low as, who knows, 138, 139, 140, which will then open up the first target to 146. And then the second target is going to be the trend continuation, or you can add at 150.16. So I'm liking the trend. Uh, it's not really helping us at the moment. We are largely moving sideways. Let me just bring up the Bollinger Bands. No squeeze whatsoever going on there. The ADX is uh, down, it's reset. That means that it's waiting for a trend to continue. And the CCI is positive. You can see it's sitting at 90. So unless something drastic changes, if this pushes, or at least the commodity channel index pushes back above 100, there's a good chance that this stock is going to eventually, at this particular moment, or this particular moment in time anyway, uh, break out above 150.16. It's obviously not going to happen on Friday, but who knows, give it a couple of weeks and we'll come back and we'll pay attention to UNP as well. Now let's continue. We've got uh, Microsoft MSFT. Uh, there we go. And again, I'm going to zoom out. I have done a little bit of analysis for a number of people in the past on Microsoft. This is just simple, uh, sort of my overview of the stock itself and, and sort of just responding to questions as to whether or not, you know, they should be interested in it, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, I don't have any lines drawn on Microsoft. And really, a lot of people email in and they say, well, should I jump into Microsoft around its all-time high? And just to start this conversation, I'm going to begin with, oh, wrong line. I'm just going to begin with a horizontal line. Let me delete this. I didn't mean to draw that. I just want to show you what generally Microsoft does. A lot of people say, well, why don't you follow Microsoft as a, as a, as a sort of trading type of stock? And what I've found in the past, not only during this, but this is a very, very recent sort of example of this, is that when you get up into a high, Microsoft likes to pull back and it's really a stock that has a different sort of psychology to it, or at least it has a different mindset that the traders who trade Microsoft. 
And it's one of those where a lot of the buying opportunity actually comes from the pullbacks. And it's the pullbacks back into the rising exponential moving averages. And that's fine. That's well and good. I'm just revealing that to you. If you go back and have a look at Microsoft, it generally holds at the 50, right? Very simply, it generally holds at the 50. And it's done tremendously well uh, for quite some time now. If I zoom out, if we want to take off the exponential moving averages and just go to a monthly chart for you. You can see for yourself that since 2009, Microsoft has gone from under $15 to over $101 per share. It's absolutely doing phenomenal. So again, we want to pay attention to trends, trends in effect. Let me just bring up the weekly chart because it gives us a little more direction or at least uh, intricate sort of patterns to look at, at least when it comes to the lows. And I'm zooming out, zooming out, zooming out, and it really becomes quite ridiculous just to see how far this stock has moved. We've got one, two, three touches here. Then we have an accelerated fan line again, which looks to be up through here. This is from the accelerated um, ascent or at least push away from the primary trend line. And then it looks like most recently, I mean, this you can just see uh, the velocity of this. Generally, when you get into the sort of third wave extensions, all right, clearly the trend itself is unsustainable. So what you can say is, well, when you go back to 2009 and you project it through, say, for instance, to 2012, that is a long-term sustainable trend, okay? It's more or less at the current time, it's sort of valuing just Microsoft at about $40 per share. It's about, you know, two and a half times above this at the moment at $101.14. So you can see obviously the aggression to this line. And I would argue very politely and humbly that at some point in time, Microsoft is going to break below this rising trend line. But for the time being, we have to work with it as a rising support area. Now let's continue with the analysis. We're clearly above the long-term simple moving averages. They are bullish exponential moving averages are bullish, yet the oscillators have flicked into a reset type of zone. So what this is alerting me to, first of all, is that you should be thinking about the retest into the 50. So what I'm not prepared to do in Microsoft is just place a trade above the break high. Remember, as I said at the beginning of this video, it's one of those stocks where a lot of the, the actual reward on the trade is jumping in as close to, if not below that rising 50 and just expecting the trend to continue. Now, this is a big disclaimer. Tech at the moment, again, the NASDAQ, it's not really looking all that good. At least it looks as though it's pricing in that of a short-term reversal to retest that 7,000 handle on the indice itself. So that aligns quite well with Microsoft. And if we do come on back down, potentially break below $100 per share, you can see the 50 rising EMA coming in at 97.85. This would certainly become a point of interest. So just follow along with Microsoft. Candlesticks, we've got an engulfing candlestick. Again, I haven't really spoken about uh, candlesticks in the previous videos, uh, but I will in this particular instance. This is the second occasion where we've got an outside day engulfing candlestick. And mixed, I mean, when we take into this, I guess, sentence in, in its entirety, there's a lot of dark candlesticks here and a lot of engulfing, if not just bearish candlesticks, which does indicate that we may have a short-term double top, all right, which may take us on back down to about 97, 96, around that handle. So I hope you're seeing the analysis. We are trending. The oscillators are giving us technically a sell signal, but we don't sell during a trend just because they turn bearish, or at least they give us a sell signal. This is more so to suggest that we need to go through a reset, which can take the formation of a sideways market move, but Microsoft generally pulls on back down to around the 50, and then it just moves pretty much in the in, in the trend continuation once we see these oscillators move back into sort of short-term oversold conditions. So I wouldn't be looking to short it, but this is certainly a stock uh, that you should be paying attention to at lower levels. I wouldn't be giving it all that much attention at the moment. Now let's continue with the analysis. Uh, we've talked about UNP. Uh, we've just gone through. Let's have a look at NVIDIA, okay? Another stock on my list. Let's zoom out and let's see what we can do with this one. Again, I mean, this is uh, quite remarkable, isn't it? I mean, look at this. It's more or less flatlined uh, since the sell-off into the low of 09. But really, this is absolutely phenomenal. Honestly, since 2016, this has gone from $25 per share up to $257 per share. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this price low as the swing point. I need to change this to a solid uh, line. This is closing price of the weekly chart and I'm simply going to align the trend. What I'll also do is when the trend accelerates away, I want to find where that pivot is. And it really looks as though during 
Uh, you could say the first quarter, or at least the first third of 2017, we really started to see that fan line acceleration, the acceleration of that primary bullish trend. So that is essentially what we're working with at the moment. Now, again, I can go into the daily time frame, and I will do that. And I need to bring up the closing price. Ooh. And let's just play around with it. Let's see what we have. We've got, I might need to give us a little bit more time. Da, 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 da. And I'm just using my eyes. Sorry if I'm not explaining it, but at the same time, I need to be conscious of time because I know that not everyone can sit down and listen to this in such detail from start to finish. But you get the point. We've got layers. You see the layers? Do the layers become obvious to you? I'm doing this very quickly, but I hope the analysis is, is, is helping you. It doesn't matter what the ticker symbol is. It's more so the application. All right. So very easily, it's giving us the roadmap. It's giving us the structure. It's giving us the direction and at least the pivot points, the turning points, the support and resistance areas that you need to pay attention to. Let me ask you the question. Are we in a trend? And the answer to that question is yes, we are. Okay, the trend direction is up. Do we want to short against the rising trend? And the answer to that question is no, we don't. So immediately it rules out uh, really short trades at this particular moment in time. Are we above the long-term simple moving averages? Yes, we are. Are we above the exponential moving averages? Yes, we are. Are we above both bullish trend lines? Yes, we are. So what we can say is that we have a plethora of support holding this stock up, even though I can very easily make the argument that we can move from 255 down to 245 or 250 very quickly. Who knows, we might even do that on Friday. Would I then be looking at or at least thinking about shorting it? And the answer to that question is no, it's not. The reason is because we've identified two areas of support. We've got the resistance point, turn, turn support, and we also have the rising trend line. And this is where we say X marks the spot. I love these X marks the spot points for bullish trend continuations after pullbacks. It's fantastic. This will move in um, sort of correlation with these oscillators flipping from overbought conditions into oversold. And that's exactly what I'm expecting to happen on NVIDIA. We've got an engulfing candlestick today is at Thursday. And there's a good chance that when NVIDIA comes down to about 245 to 250, this is going to be a bullish continuation. So what we can do is we can, first of all, place a bullish breakout trade up here at 270.53. Actually, I'll move it up a little bit more. But at the same time, this is going to be privy to at least future movement to bring it down. So we might actually get an entry on this at about 255, okay? Now, that's really all I wanna say. There's not too much in terms of chart patterns at the moment. I mean, if this level doesn't hold, I mean, just because we get here doesn't mean we go long. We have to wait for the right candlestick patterns to show up, but this is just a general vicinity of where we are interested in. Outside of that, I can more or less duplicate that same green rectangular box and drag it down, drag it down to 215, 220. And this becomes the secondary area of support. And this is dating back to really the entirety once again of 2018. And this is going to be another pressure point just over here. Okay, so that is nvidia i like the stock it's it's already moved a tremendous distance we have to be mindful of that but at the same time we've got no definitive signals that this stock wants to reverse yet okay yet ultimately it will at some future point but we don't want to really try and time that at the moment or at least certainly it's not clear whatsoever technically speaking but at some later date yes it will be a trade like that but for now uh, let's simply continue. Let's move into Alibaba. Now, as I said at the previous or at the beginning of this video, there are two stocks on the list that I've got past support and resistance lines on, one of which is Alibaba. The second stock is Facebook. And a lot of people have requested Facebook also through email. Uh, so I'm pretty happy and glad that I can more or less do these two right now. But I just wanted to say the reason why I'm not doing the support and resistance in the trend line is because it's already there. So you can see for yourself here, we've got more or less a double bottom here. I mean, you don't want to technically call it a double bottom. Double bottoms generally set up within a month, but you can see a very clear support area. I might as well just draw another support area on this chart down here. And you can see that we've got the sell-off, the bounce, the sell-off. W for winner, which is great, means go long. And then since then, it's done tremendously well for Alibaba. So I can also almost do a, I need to bring up the right, tool because we've clearly accelerated away from the trend line. This is in the year 2017. And 
this is giving us a projection of, well, maybe at some later date, just work with me, that if price action was to sell off, that maybe X marks the spot somewhere here. And it's really coming in at about $190 per share at the moment. And it sort of aligns quite nicely with the overall market. It also, interestingly enough, is showing up pretty much where both the 100 and the 200 simple moving averages are lining up. So even though I'm looking at this, number one, I am bullish on Alibaba, okay, because the trend direction is up. I'm already recognizing a pattern. And the pattern is, if I can bring up the right tool again, as I look for it here, the pattern is, well, very similar to the previous stock we looked at. If we were to see a pullback, that is exactly what we'd be looking at. Now, very clearly, we are at up or very close to a new all-time high. This is the second time we've come on up to the psychological round number of $200 per share. It looks as though we are potentially beginning to roll, and there's a good chance that we may actually see a continued pullback. But if we don't, there's no reason not to go long above the most recent swing high because this is going to be another trend continuation. And the reason I can say that is because if I bring up the CCI and the ADX, the ADX is reset. Okay, this is telling us that is a trend ready or not? And the answer to that question is yes, it is. So you see when it gets down to this resting period and turns up, that's when it likes the movement and it tells us that the movement is legitimate. It, does, it's, it doesn't matter whether it's a bullish or bearish movement, just like it was over here, it turns up, it's in the direction of the bearish move, okay, and vice versa. So what you wanna know is when it gets into the resting phase and turns up, that's generally the direction you wanna trade with, or at least it's saying that it is a legitimate move. Now the CCI is doing okay, it's back below 100, it's at 85, but we have pulled back a little bit. So I mean, if we were to see some white candlesticks, say for instance on Friday in a continuation into next week, there's no reason not to consider going long as a trend continuation above 213. Otherwise, this is the general vicinity as to where you'd want to leave the trade, allow it to trade against the direction of the trend, but then be one of the intelligent traders who trades off from those rising areas of support as opposed to sort of selling or at least aggressively going short into the rising trend, all right? Rather, trade in the direction of the trend, write it down, it's the golden rule, and it'll save you from entering into a bunch of potentially uh, very dangerous trades. That is Alibaba. I mean, there's more analysis that I can add. We can look into sort of candlestick construction. We've got a spinning top up here. We have an outside day, or at least a tweezer top reversal, a one white soldier, which has failed. We have a high wave spinning top, another uh, temporary sort of bullish candlestick here that was immediately negated by this hangman at resistance. We've got almost out of a shooting star. It's not technically a shooting star, but it does have a high wick. And this is also after a gap up and a gap which has closed as at Friday, all right, which is almost taking the formation of an evening star reversal. So I'm very quickly just walking through candlestick recognitions. And it looks as though we've got a little bit of a neckline here. This is not M for a double top. This is that of the ebbs and flows of the market coming back down into support. That's where I assume Alibaba is going to move towards or at least work towards over the coming weeks. And as you can see, just to confirm my suspicions, the oscillators have crossed into sell, or at least into the sell sort of direction. And it makes a lot of sense uh, charting Alibaba like this. So pay attention to this. I mean, that's a pretty horrible circle. My apologies for that. Um, but that would be my course of action. And really, we can just, again, come back to this from time to time and see what's happening when it, when it comes to these individual trades. Let's move into, I mean, I think I've, oh, actually, before I move into that, let's go into Facebook. I said I was going to speak about Facebook. And you can see on my, on my screen here, by the way, if I go to the weekly chart, um, you can see the three fan levels just here. And what you should be paying attention to, or actually what I can do, let me just, for analysis sake, let me do the extension to the right because it was just catching my eye there. Um, clearly, this extension of the first primary trend is going to do absolutely nothing to current price action. Ready? See it just going all the way up here. Completely irrelevant. We'll never hit that again. Too aggressive. Um, exponential rise. Forget about it. This, however, is interesting because in the past, resistance, almost resistance, resistance, we just walked it. Resistance. And when I say resistance, that does sometimes lead to a reversal. Here we are in Facebook. And I'm zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. First of all, you see the pattern trend line resistance, okay, old support, new resistance, and the primary trend, right, support. And really what we're doing is we're bouncing between the rising resistance and support, okay? Another thing to take note of, we're making a series of high lows, okay, and also higher highs. 
which is the continuation of a trend. All right, the trend is in effect, it hasn't reversed. However, we're back up at resistance. Okay, we're back up at resistance or very close to resistance. If I go into the daily time frame, have a look at this. I'll zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. We're up at 200 or very close to 205, $210 per share. So immediately, as nice as what Facebook looks right now, <clears throat> this is prohibiting me from actually going long. And I think it's going to save a lot of people's sort of bacon up here uh, from placing a bunch of long trades on Facebook. What you'd rather do is wait, wait to see if anything happens or just wait for the pullback to bounce off from support. If I bring up the long-term or at least the short-term exponentials, we're clearly trading, which is good. We're actually really not even retesting the 20. The last time we retested the 20 was, yes, a couple of weeks ago. But prior to that, I mean, we really haven't looked back. I mean, the 10, yes, we're walking the 10. But the 20, not so much, which is showing us that it is strong. We've got rising simple moving averages. Looked as though we were crossing. This was after Facebook came down and tagged that primary trend at 155. But you can see that they're starting to separate. It's hard to tell right now. But what's happening is that that new price over the past 100 days is factoring into this little pink line here. And what you're going to note is that this is going to turn up aggressively, whereas the 200 is more or less going to remain at its current sort of angle or non-angle at the moment for a few more sessions, probably something like 70 or so more sessions until we see this begin to really aggressively slope up and try and catch at least that rising 100. So this is a little bit of a... How would I say it? A little bit more, I guess, creative analysis because we're working with diagonal lines, we're working with trend lines and lines that probably a lot of people are failing to see. So if you're looking at this for the first time or if you're unfamiliar with analysis and you're looking at Facebook, you'd be saying to yourself, well, it looks bullish, it's, it's trending. But at the same time, this is problematic and you don't want to find yourself uh, trading into known resistance points because you could buy simply here or you could buy here could buy here and then simply get stuck moving sideways, all right? You don't want to do that. You want to wait for the pullback into deeper areas of support and then play the bounce. So if we see Facebook come down to 193 or 190, that will be potentially a buy price. It's not going to be a, a sort of official legitimate jump in here. Don't, don't worry about anything else. No, 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 no. We're going to go through the analysis when this happens, okay? So that's going to be the outlook on Facebook as well for now anyway. And I mean, what you could do as an example is place a bunch of virtual trades on Facebook. And I say virtual, I must stress virtual because they're going to turn into losing positions. And that would be um, just above the, the swing highs of, of both Wednesday and Thursday. And I say that very humbly because I've done it in the past myself and I've failed to pick up on this. And um, it's it's just really good to look at these stocks with absolutely no emotion invested into them and just to appreciate them for what they're really showing, okay? Very important, big, 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 big learning opportunity right there. So let me continue, let's go into, I mean, we've done, I'm not sure if I've done DHR. I think I've, I've gone through a fair amount now. I don't wanna speak for too long. I mean, what is, I mean, it is getting quite late, but let's move into DHR anyway. Let's continue with this. I know this is good because it doesn't have any lines on it, <laughs> nor does anything else that I've looked at. It's good that we've gone through Alibaba and Facebook too, but this is a pretty decent trend as well. I mean, a lot of these stocks are trending, which is good. I mean, that's what you want to trade ideally as, as a trader. I mean, really any fractal you want to trade on, first of all, you want to make sure that it's trending and trending in the right direction. Um, but you can see here, again, one, two, three, an acceleration away from the primary trend line. Okay, you've got another one, two, three. And what will be interesting to know is, this is a weekly chart. Do we have a lower wick here? I mean... I don't know what the answer is. Here we go. Pay attention to this just here. And no, not really. That's fine. But we got, got relatively close to it. At least we back tested. Let me just bring it up. Horizontal line. Let me just go to the closing line just here. And I'm just going to use my eyes to visualize turning points. Certainly there's one here. And I mean, what you don't want to do and... This is, again, personally what I choose not to do is I would rather have less lines than more lines, but I'd rather have, of course, the most important lines, the lines where we see multiple touches because I know it's really important, right? See here at $80, we've got one, two, three, four, we broke above it. Then if you pay attention here and here, okay, here and here, what you're going to probably find is it almost come down and it didn't tag it, but it got very close. But you see the point, very important pivot. Very important pivot. When you get this mess up here like this, generally what's under construction is a chart pattern. And the more I look at it, and maybe we should have, I mean, ideally we would have looked at this perhaps a week or so ago. Oh, 
I did not mean to do that. I need to change this to a trend line just so I can draw a diagonal line. But you can see just here, I mean, this really looks like that of an ascending triangle or at least some form of a rising wedge. Not so much the wedge, more so that of a triangle. And it looks as though it's broken and it's broken to the downside. So let me ask you the question. If we've broken out of this uh, rising sort of triangle, let's just call it an ascending triangle, where do you think the, the support or the target is going to be? And it's not a trick question. It's relatively straightforward. It's going to show up and I'm going to do a double line here just so I can really validate this. You can see support, or sorry, resistance turn support, but then you can see also resistance turn support here. So this is going to give us, very simply, a box of opportunity, really. If you're not in DHR now, this is looking overwhelmingly weak, okay? You can see, obviously, 103, we're just falling like a stone, but it doesn't mean you just want to short, say, for instance, below Thursday's candle. You'd rather wait for the trade to come down into an identifiable area of support, okay? And then you want to look for the candlestick reversals. That's really what you want to be doing on DHR. We've broken below the rising 100. The 100 has failed to hold as support, but technically we are still bullish, or at least we are in that of a sort of a, a consolidational phase with price action between both the 100 and the 200, but they are generally sloping up. We're below the exponential moving averages, which then makes us at least ask the question, are we in some form of a channel within that of a sort of ascending triangle, potentially, but it's still giving us the direction and the target of this price, or at least the stock falling ultimately down to 94. Again, when we get to this box, this is going to be the box of interest. It's going to, first of all, what we need to look at is, well, we have to see, are our oscillators oversold at support? Are there other areas of support holding this up? And look, the 200 is coming very close to the top of that green box. So you can start to see, well, there is a little bit of support. Doesn't mean necessarily that we have to get all the way down there. We could even overshoot it a little bit, but at least it gives us a target to, for, what, for what we should be looking for when we do. Ideally, you would have played, uh, traded the breakdown of the, of the actual chart pattern. But again, that comes with additional risk because technically it is against the trend direction. So it looks as though overwhelmingly a lot of these stocks are moving into uh, pullbacks, okay? Pullbacks within definitive bullish uptrends. And probably a lot of people are going to get concerned about the market if it continues to pull back. Yes, I can see it happening. But at the same time, that's why we do market analysis as well. But you can see here the ADX, what's it doing? It's turning up. That means it likes the trend direction or the short-term trend, and that is to the downside. The CCI is tanking. It's at negative 76. I don't generally like uh, the negative prints on the CCI. When you get below negative 100, it isn't a sell signal. I like it as a buy signal, but only when we see other criteria met. So the CCI isn't really helping us all that much. But we can say that, look, this target down here is a legitimate target and something that we should be thinking about moving forward. No bullish trade on DHR. I mean, technically, yes, I could give you one. That bullish trade is going to be priced all the way up here at 104.25, but our point of interest is down here. And until that happens, more or less, you don't want to be following DHR. I mean, you wouldn't be looking to, to jump into this immediately. All right, sort of a wait and see, patient sort of game. But when the time is right, that's when we'll act. And that's really what trading is all about, just being patient, identifying areas, identifying risk and reward ratios, and then just taking the trade. I mean, it's, and then it's just more or less repeating that process over and over again. And uh, it just takes a time. It's a process of time. And um, really, that's all it needs to be. It's all it really needs to be. I think I've recapped, or maybe I haven't. I've got Adobe and also uh, Xerox by the looks of it. And I think they're the last two. Okay, I think they're the last two. It doesn't really matter which one I start with. I'm actually zooming out on Xerox just to have a look at this. Why don't we do this? Because this is different. We'll do XRX now. And then what we'll do is we'll jump into Adobe to finish with, okay? This just caught my attention because it's one of the few stocks which actually isn't trending to the upside. It's uh, doing something a little bit different. Xerox has never really recovered, by the way, from the, the tech mania, uh, the peak, the bubble back in, in, in 98, or at least the, the millennium, the new millennium. And really since then, if I can just bracket this down onto a sort of a, a different sort of fractal, you can see very clearly that once again, these support areas, all right, back in 2000, 2002, they held in 2009, seven years later. Uh, the resistance back in 03, 04, what happened? It held most recently in 14, 15. So you can see the benefit 
of drawing these lines and drawing these lines correctly. Now, again, the higher I go, the less sort of relevant they become. But look at this support over here in 99 or 98 becomes resistance more or less to the penny in the peak of 2007. Now, what is more important for us is if I go down into the current fractals and let's see if we can really distinguish any legitimate support resistance. We've got one here, it looks like. I mean, we're really going back quite a distance to try and find this. And it looks like we have one more just here. You see this bunch of trading activity around $25. I'm just looking, looking very carefully. Let me drag the chart over. Where are we? Where are we priced at? $26.45. So we're actually just above that level. Immediately what we can say is, well, Xerox has got a pretty decent trade down to 25 bucks. The problem is, is that I'm already identifying that we've got lower wicks. You see all these lower wicks? Think about it like this. If you were in the past looking to short Xerox below this level, below this level, below this level, it hasn't worked out well for you. It's, just, it's, it's a big alert saying, don't do it. And when I see this, I simply don't do it. Generally what I do, remember like that first stock I looked at, the insurance policy I put down below the law of the wick. And that's just conditioning that I've learned through a lot of hard lessons. Now, on top of that, just to point out, I know I wouldn't speak about the market analysis, but I really just want to point this out. When you get a gap, now this is obviously a huge gap. I always say, eventually, it sort of acts like a magnet, right? At some later date, we should come up and we should close. And then generally that is the resistance area and potentially the continuation of that trend in the in the gap direction. Now we've done this on Xerox. I mean, we, we gapped down in December, January, okay? December 16, January 17. We came on up, we tagged it September 17. We overshot it over here on January 18, or it looks like January 18, if not February 18. And that was the closure of the gap, the definitive closure of the gap. And then what happens? We roll over and we're moving back. So look, Xerox is a trade. I don't like it. I mean, honestly, I mean, the chart itself is just ugly. It's broken. You're looking at a stock that's $26 and um, it's just, it, it doesn't look good. Even if I was to draw a shorter term resistance area here, um, there's no chance I'm, I'm looking to short this. Even though I could say, look, there's a very high chance that if the market continues to pull back, we're going to move from 26 down to, what is it, 25, 26.45 down to 25. That's a dollar and 45 cents on a 26.45 dollar stock. That's a pretty decent move. It's just, it's just something that I'm not prepared to do, all right, personally. And because of that, I don't want to spend too much more time on, on Xerox. You can see it is bearish though, I must say. Xerox is bearish. We're below the long-term simples. Price looks to be breaking down. We're below the exponential moving averages as well. You can see our oscillators are pushing into oversold. They're not really giving us any warning that they want to turn back up. It's a very weak looking stock. And really, there's not much going for it. In fact, the ADX has turned up saying that it validates the bearish sell-off or at least the tanking of it over the past two sessions. And the CCI is at negative 156. So really, the, the benefit of the doubt at this particular moment is with the sellers. I say that... Um, cautiously for anyone who may be holding this long i understand that but look that's just my my honest uncensored sort of take on this stock it really isn't it it always is with any of this analysis no matter what we're looking at and when you look at the trends of the of the other stocks and if you can just identify trends in effect you shouldn't be really gravitating around stocks like xerox i mean it did perform quite well it was up at 50 bucks a share back in in 2014 but here we are and we're back at 26 so there's a good chance if I can finish with Xerox before you really finish with Adobe, the, the, the graph you're playing with really is down here at $18 as a low and the high is up here at 60, which is still a decent move. I mean, it's almost as high as 70, yeah, 70 bucks. That's the ultimate sort of channel that we've been stuck in since 2001. So, and, and most of the time, or most recently, we've only been able to come on back up about 50% of the channel itself for the entirety of the channel. So this company is something that really I wouldn't be personally gravitating around unless we really reverse this bearish uh, movement. But at the moment, it just looks exceptionally weak. However, I'm really not prepared to really say all that much else on it. And again, I say that politely and respectfully. What I'd rather do, I mean, look at, look at for instance, Adobe look at Adobe. It's just trending. It's it's parabolic. It's This is something that should interest you because this is where capital is flowing to. It's flowing to stocks like Adobe and it's not flowing into Xerox. It's just the, 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 the honest reality of it. 
trying to find out of a bullish trend in effect. I mean, obviously it is, but also just the, the varying fan levels of it. It doesn't really look all that good. You can really just disregard this. It's rather useless at this point. And really support and resistance is rather pointless as well. Uh, horizontal line can go here. But apart from that, we really don't have much to work with. We really don't have much at all to work with. I'm not even prepared to draw anything else on this. I just want to go back and have a look and see, well, you, you see this, it's not even nice. I mean, the, the way you have to, the, the mindset to trade Adobe at the moment is simply exponential moving averages. And when the pullback occurs, it's generally back into the past peak. Okay, that's, that's just generally how it is. So if you can just use your eyes with me, you see this just here, you get the break, the pullback, the continuation, then the pullback, which takes us very close to, but not ultimately back down. So it's, it's working like a stair step, okay? Most recently, like this. So based on that evidence and sort of past behavioral sort of patterns that generally tend uh, to play out, okay? That's really all what technical analysis is. Resistance, resistance, support, support over here, okay? The difference is, is that this support area obviously down here at 230, let me just draw it on the screen, is below the 50. I, I, I can see that. I get that. In the past, the 50 has held a support. It's been the line in the sand. So what we can do, again, I love these rectangular boxes. They go nowhere. They sit on my screen and they say, hey, what did you see last time and what you should be looking out for when I revisit the stock in the future? And what this can do is it can give us, again, a general vicinity. I can say Adobe's weak at the moment. It's at 251. We've got bearish candlesticks. We've got potentially a reversal gap just here. We tried to fill the gap. We did. Since then, we've been rejected. And it looks like once this 20 definitively cracks, we're coming back down to the 50, okay? The question becomes, well, is the 50 going to be the holding point? Because I can make the argument or the analysis anyway, that look, we do have some short-term resistance over here and also support. So you sort of get the graph, you get the, the the mindset or at least what to look for. Very simply as well, you can trade the breakout. The breakout is going to be above 260.71. So you see the theme on the bunch of these stocks that we've gone through, okay? It's more so the pullback bounce type of play right now. It, I mean, we could see the breakout and that's fine if we do. No reason to sort of hesitate and not jump in. But the benefit of the doubt right now is short-term weakness in a bunch of stocks. And I think that fits a, you know, a little nicely with the overall um, markets themselves as well. So I think that's the list. I, I really do. We've got Adobe. We've done uh, Xerox. We've got uh, DHR that we have gone through. We've also obviously recapped Alibaba as we have lines on it. We have done Facebook as it's got lines on it. We've done... Uh, applied materials, ticker symbol AMAT. Well, oh, that is not the right ticker symbol. AMAT we've walked through. I think we've done UMP. Yeah, we've done UMP as well. Facebook, yes. Microsoft, we've gone through to buy the dip opportunity. And also uh, NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA. So we've just gone through nine stocks. And I hope this has been beneficial for you. I hope maybe you've, you know, I've helped you at least when it comes to the analysis uh, if you have any questions at all, email me success at pivotpoint-trading.com. If you want to have a look into that pro analysis class, that's more or less what we do, not in its entirety, but it's a little bit of a breakdown, but we apply it to these stocks over here, plus gold and silver in the US dollar and the overall markets themselves, which is very important when you start bringing individual uh, sort of stock analysis into the market analysis as well and trying to find confirmations between the markets and that stock encompassed within that larger bracket or that larger market too. So I'm not going to talk any longer. In fact, I don't know how long I have been speaking for. I'm going to render this video and probably catch some sleep. I'll be back with you maybe over the weekend. We'll see, but certainly on Saturday in that pro analysis class. Again, if you have any questions, email me. Um, until next time anyway, it's James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. All the best, everyone. Farewell.